everybody, it's Emily at Arc Schooling, and I'm going to talk to you today about a bird unit study that I'm putting together for my high schooler. Yay, a homeschool video! I haven't done one of these in a really long time, but I thought it might be fun to t just kind of talk about what I've been working on. My 15-year-old son has been floundering as of late as to what it is he wants to do, but he's had a lifelong passion for birds. So after some talking and kind of thinking it out, he thinks he may want to go into ornithology. Possibly. Maybe. I don't know. We've been dabbling in a lot of things, it seems, the last year or so. But this one he thinks might be for him. So I said, okay, how about we put together an ornithology unit. It would be like a semester half credit course. And we'll see what he, he thinks after that. And so he's game. But he's also 15. And He's been asking for a pet bird for basically his entire life. Like since he was about seven or eight, he's been asking if he can have his own bird. And I've always said no, because when he was younger, it would be my bird that he would look at and play with once in a while, but I would be the one doing all of the maintenance. And I was just, I don't want to do that. I don't want to clean bird poop. I, I don't enjoy that kind of thing. I have a dog and he's a lot of work. So I don't really want another pet that I have to take care of. So I told him now that he's 15, and he really wants to think about going into ornithology, maybe now is the time that he could have his own bird. That is another part of this project. So I'm just going to lay out what we're working on and show you the resources I'm using just to give you an idea of how my brain works when I'm putting together a unit. So I've been collecting books for him. Some of them we've already, we already owned and some I've purchased and so I've just been sort of collecting and putting this unit together over the last, I don't know, three weeks, I think. So here's my layout. So I'm assigning him a journaling project. He is not a fan of writing, but I need him to work on it. <laughs> it's a skill he needs to work on. And he's always been very like literal scientific minded anyway. So for him, writing anything that has to be flowery is not a thing he does. But I'm thinking for this, it's science writing and it might appeal to him more. So his project over the course of the ornithology unit is to keep a journal of just everything and anything related to what he's studying. It's a daily project. I want him to write something every day about what he's learning. It can be as random as like notes about the birds he was watching outside, or it could be about the book he's reading, or something his pet parrot did, whatever. I don't care, I just want him putting words on paper. So that's the overarching project, which isn't really anything major, but it would be important for him. I'm also assigning lots of reading because it's me and it's books and I can't not. Some of these are more for reference, some of these are just for non-fiction reading, and a few of them are fiction or semi-fiction. And so I'm just going to kind of divide them up. I'm going to show you the um, reference books first. One I don't have yet because it's on hold at my library. I'm going to go pick that up. And that is the Birdwatcher's Bible. I thought it would be helpful for him because bird watching is part of the projects, part of one of the major projects he'll be doing. So I thought it, it just might be something useful. I also have our handy dandy bird guide. We use the Sibley Field Guide to Birds of Eastern North America and we've always really enjoyed this bird guide. It gets a lot of use. Um, we keep it by the window where the bird feeder is so we can easily identify the birds. Because he's getting a pet bird, we also got him the complete pet bird owner's handbook. It's a big reference, but I'm hoping it is useful to him. Mm -hmm. He stuck one of the bookmarks from the, the bird crate in there because he thought it belonged. It's a parrot. It does. So it's the African Grey peeking out of his book. And I also have the Sibley Guide to bird and life behavior. And this is a great resource. It's full of just about everything you'd ever want to know about birds. And it's got the same style of illustrations as the bird guide. And yeah, I just this is a great resource. I wish I'd bought it sooner, honestly. So I think this will get a lot of use. So those are the reference books. I also have some um, just nonfiction that I really think he should read that he would get a lot out of. First book is 
Birdology by Cy Montgomery. I love her writing. I actually really want to read this too. I don't know if I'll get to it while he's reading it. I'm hoping, but if not, I'll get to it eventually. But this is all about um, parrots, cassowaries, crows, pigeons, hens, hawks, and hummingbirds specifically. And it's just what makes a bird a bird and that sort of thing. It sounds really fun and interesting and her writing is awesome. I have The Genius of Birds by Jennifer Ackerman. This is a New York Times bestseller. I've heard a lot about it, have not had a chance to read it, but I think that this would be a really great book because bird intelligence is something he's always been interested in as well. We've, we've watched, um, I think it was a Nova documentary a few years ago about how smart birds are and he thought that was fascinating. So I think this would appeal to him. And because he has always wanted a parrot, and that we're probably getting one, I thought he might enjoy Alex and Me. And this is by Irene M. Pepperberg, and it says, How a scientist and a parrot discovered a hidden world of animal intelligence and formed a deep bond in the process. This book sounds awesome, and it's, it's all about her, her life with this parrot. And so not only were they, like, a pet owner and pet, but they were, she was also kind of studying bird intelligence through her relationship with him. And he was, a, he was a famous parrot and very, very intelligent. It's an African gray, which are really smart parrots and they can talk, but not only can they speak, but they can, they can hold a conversation. They can think for themselves as to what they want to say. They're not just mimicking the words. So I always thought that was pretty neat. And so, yeah, I think this book will be a really great read for him and I hope I can get to it too. It looks like it'll be a quick read too. There's lots of pictures and the font is fairly large. I also have Audubon on the Wings of the World by Fabian Grolo and Jeremy Royer. This is a graphic novel all about Audubon and it is so pretty. <laughs> I'm probably definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna read this but I don't know when but I'm, I'm gonna have to get to this because it's just it's beautiful. It's full color illustrations and yeah, it's just a gorgeous biography of Audubon. We have studied him before and I have somewhere, I don't know where, I've been looking for it. It's around. I have a book of all of his paintings and so I want to pull that out to kind of go along with this. My son isn't really an artist per se, but he can draw so I thought it might be a fun project to try to do some drawings in the style of Audubon of the birds that we see in the yard. And I do have one other book that I don't have yet. It's on hold at the library. We're going to have to go pick it up this week. And that is H is for Hawk by Helen McDonald. And that one is specifically about birds of prey. Now, in addition to those, I do have just a couple of literature books. Now, these aren't anything major. They're, they're all children's books. He's not a big reader, but I thought these would appeal to him the most. I have My Side of the Mountain by Jean Craighead George. I have the tarantula in my purse and 172 other wild pets. We did read this aloud a few years ago when he was much younger. I just thought he might like to pick it up again and read it with different eyes. And of course I have Zeno and Alia, or The Desperate Adventures of Zeno and Alia by um, Jean Kelly. This was in the family reading crate for February. This ties in really well with this because the author based Zeno on Alex, so there's a lot of overlap in those two books, so I really want these to kind of go together. So that's all the reading part. Um, I do have a bunch of projects for him. I kind of, I always put together my units for the kids like this, and I, I give them choices. So for the, all of those books, he's not going to read all of them. I, he has to read at least three of the nonfiction and at least two of the fiction and the reference books are just reference for the projects and such and then for the projects he has to choose five from this list and there's a lot the ones I think he'll probably do uh, for sure is the bird watching I want him to keep a bird watching log where he just for 30 minutes a day to an hour a day he's focusing on the birds that come to the yard and keeping track of them their behavior the kind of food they seem to like the most. I want them to experiment with that and see which kinds of bird foods work the best and bring the different kinds of birds and that sort of thing. Have some owl pellets left over from a project we didn't finish way back. <laughs> like I think I've had them for like three years. So I thought it might be fun to dissect some owl pellets and 
see what we can learn from that and maybe do a study on owls specifically. He, uh, owls are another bird he's always loved, so I thought that might be a fun project. I don't have any books on hand about owls, I think, besides like a couple of children's picture books, so if you know of any really good owl books we should look for, that might be fun. Another project I have on here is to research some experts in the field of ornithology and write up some biographies about them. I, I would like him to do at least two, just so he gets some different types of ornithologists, because there's such variation in that field, and I want him to kind of explore what there is out there. So I thought that might be interesting. I have assigned him to study the evolution of birds and put together a poster showing some of the different um, aspects of that. And I don't know if he'll do that one because it's it involves art, but I thought it might be something he could do. I want him to choose at least one species of bird. He could do this twice and do two, but at least one, and write a scientific style article about what he's learned about that particular bird species. It can't be less than 500 words, and he needs to include a bibliography of at least three sources. So projects like that. A lot of writing, because that is his weak area and he needs to work on it. So I'm hoping that because it's birds, that he'll be inspired to like really write more and well. And we also have a few documentaries we're going to watch. I have The Life of Birds. So I think it's 10 episodes. It was on Amazon Prime and I had to buy it because of course it wasn't free, but that's okay because we're going to watch them. We've already watched the first one, but it's beautiful. It's David Attenborough. All of his stuff is stunning, so we'll get, we'll get through all of that. And I also have on my list um, Winged Migration. I don't own it. I don't think it's on Netflix or Amazon Prime, but I know that my library carries it, so we're probably going to borrow that. And if you know of any other bird documentaries that he might enjoy, let me know. I think, I know there's that one we watched a long time ago from Nova about bird intelligence, but if there's anything else that you guys know of, let me know below in the comments and we'll check those out. So that's what I have for his ornithology semester unit project. <laughs> I hope that he gets something out of it and I think it's going to be a really fun unit. Have you guys ever studied mythology with your kids. Tell me about some of your favorite resources. I'd love to know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Happy reading. Bye!